Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. Eu agradeço a todos os brethren com a paz do Senhor. Vamos se levantar. Em reverência à leitura da palavra do Senhor, que está localizada em Levíticas. Levíticas, capítulo 14. Leviticus 14, we're going to read from verse 33. Leviticus 14, 33. Leviticus is at the beginning of the Bible, right? 33. Leviticus 14, Leviticus 14, 33. It's part of the Pentateuch. The first five books written by Moses. Did you find it? 14. 33 forward says the following. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When you have come into the land of Canaan, which I give you as possession, And I put uh, the leprous plague in a house in the land of your possession. And he who owns the house comes and tells the priest, saying, It seems to me that there is some plague in the house. Then the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest goes into it to examine the plague that all that is in the house may not be made unclean. And afterwards the priest shall go into in to examine the house, and he shall examine the plague. And indeed, if the plague is on the, the, the wall of the house with ingrained streaks, greenish or reddish, which appe appears to be deep in the wall, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and sh shut it the house seven days and the priest shall come again on the seventh day and look and indeed if the plague has spread on the wall of the house then he the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which is the plague and they shall cast them into an unclean place outside of the city And he shall cast the house of the scraped inside all around, and then they will replace everything. And um, the brethren may be seated, all the way to verse 42. My brethren, the book, the book of Leviticus, is a book that speaks a lot about uh, the instructions of the Lord for the people, right? So we're going to see here many instructions from the Lord so that the people would survive in the period that came after Egypt. So the Lord gave many instructions how they should proceed in circumstances, such circumstances, this and that. So then everything that the Lord, the all the laws and commandments that needed to be followed so that when they did this the people would be the Lord would be pleased with the obedience of the people because they were obeying by faith they were living something that they never experienced before which was the dependence complete dependence and total dependency on the Lord Um, the God of Israel. So now, what does he have to do with our lives? The message is a message that was geared towards the families. Why is that? Because on the month of October, we're going to be praying for the families. For As a uh, determination from the Lord, every home will receive a prayer with laying of hands, together with a group of pastors and deacons, and the brethren who are part of the group of intercession. This is an, an instruction from the Lord. Why is that? Because the Lord has a love, a great love for the family. And the family was something that was instituted by God. 
all the way back in Genesis. We will see that when God created Adam and Eve, and there, what takes place there? A marriage, a union between the man and the woman. That's it. There's nothing else besides this. What we hear today about this, uh, similar to this, is something that comes from man's reason and could, something that comes from human understanding to obfuscate God's project of uniting a man and a woman. Because when you do this, the marriage between man and woman is something that points out to whom? To the marriage between Jesus and the church. This is prophetic. The marriage is prophetic. And when Jesus comes to the world in his the first days of ministry, what did Jesus do? He performs a miracle in a wedding. You know that. The first miracle that Jesus performed was on during a wedding. So we see how the Lord has zeal for this. And we see that throughout the years, really, from the beginning, the intention of the enemy was to steal this. The enemy uh, intended to break this union and break this project all the way back in Adam and Eve. It disobedience caused what? Caused sin to enter into man's heart. And now we see here when the Lord instructs Moses regarding exactly this. When man disobeys the Lord, when man allows human reason to enter, when man allows the things of the world to enter into his heart, then sin comes. And sin likes to build a camp inside of the heart. The, the sin comes to stay. Sin comes in and doesn't go away. It comes to stay. And the Lord s says to Moses, Moses, when you receive someone and in the house of this person there is leprosy or there is a plague, you need to instruct them in this way. A person, the head of the household, needs to identify this. He needs to identify that inside of his house, inside of his heart, there is a gap. There is a disobedience. And when this happens, what is he supposed to do? To whom the head of the household needs to go and speak with? To the psychiatrist? To the mother-in-law? Or the father-in-law? Or the neighbor? To the boss? No. To the priest? So then everything that happens in our lives, everything that happens inside of our homes, everything that happens inside of our hearts, we need to go run to the Lord because He is the priest. The Lord Jesus is our priest. He is the one who knows us. And so the brethren may, may go through the intercession group. Oh, pastor, I need to tell you a little gossip, this and this and that. No, no, that's nothing to do with this. You, this, no, this is not necessary. You will speak with the Lord. You will be called according to the instruction of the Lord, receiving a prayer with a layer of hands so that the Lord may speak with you, so that the Lord may give a blessing to your life, so that the Lord may bring a strengthening to your home, so that the Lord may give you an opportunity for you to let go of the things that are not of any worth to the Lord and so that you go to this meeting, you leave this meeting strengthened in the Lord because that's what the Lord does. When man goes to Moses, in the case Aaron, the, the priest, when man goes to the Lord, what was instructed? Now take everything out of the house, put it all outside and close the house for seven days. 
That was the, the main, most important instruction. If there is leprosy, that's what it is. There is disobedience. You cannot, you are unable to obey the Lord. You are unable to keep in your heart what the Lord has spoken to you, the instructions of the Lord. You cannot keep your fellowship with the Lord. Then you need to take everything out of your house and close it for seven days. And why is that? Because the number seven is a perfect perfect number of the, of the Lord. And every time we read in the, the word about number seven, it is the number of perfection. Seven churches, seven letters, seven spirits, seven musical notes. On the seventh day, the Lord created everything. So when man needs to have a closeness, closeness with the Lord, he needs to close his, his house, close everything. Why is that? Because when you do this, you will go and kneel down. You put your mouth on dust. You kneel down. You go to early dawn. You're going to pray. You're going to pay a price. You're going to read the Bible. You will go return to the Word of God and you see how the Lord will deliver your life. You see how the Lord is going to speak with you. You see how the Lord is going to resolve any situation. Whether it's a familial situation or a situation with children, a situation at work, a physical situation with infirmity. The Lord is the Lord of miracles. And we speak about healing of leprosy is a miracle. And there are situations in our homes today the situation inside of our hearts that only a miracle. But for this, you need to close the door. You need to remain seven days with that door closed. Why is that? Because closing the door is exactly this. It's for you not to ask advice for the friends, not ask advice to doctors, or not asking advice to anyone. It is between you and the Lord between you and the priest. You know why? Because everything that man does today, everything that man does, that man does geared towards what is, what geared towards what goes against the Word of God. So when you go to have a conversation with someone about your children and about your marriage, what what is the advice that I'm going to give? Oh, don't waste your time. That child is already past saving. He is an adult now. Let him fend for himself. You see, hey, you have the right to be happy. No, find someone else. And that's the advice. Those are the advices of the world because the world has lost the control of everything. So it is easier for you to give up than for you to fight for what the Lord has given you. It is easier for, easier many times for you to silence yourself or letting go of what God has given you so that you may so that you allow the world to enter into your home and into your heart close the door don't listen to anyone only listen to the Lord the servant of the Lord the faithful church needs to have intimacy with the Lord and we will only have intimacy with the Lord from the moment that you open up your heart and that you remove everything from your house. What do you mean everything? The anger, the hatred, the bitterness, the past that you never forget, the failure from someone that you can never forgive, all of this. Put it out outside. Because when you do this, you will see how the Lord will look to a house and will see what? He said, yeah, this one wants the blessing. There is sincerity in this home. There is sincerity in this heart. When man turns to the Lord with a contrite heart, God operate the impossible. God does that. And many times, it is something simple easy to 
take care of. But then you leave there. Because on the seventh day, on the seventh day, who needed to who needed to go to the home to check? Is the head of the household and needed to go back to, uh, to the home and check? No. The priest would go there. The priest was the one who would check the house. The priest would inspect the house and now he would look around. Everything. Look at the walls. Look at the doors. <coughs> look the, at the roof. He would look around. And if he found still there was still a plague, there is leprosy in the house, then a new process would start. A new process. The process of removing the walls, the, the stones. Scrape, remove, remove everything, throw it out, remove the stones and throw it outside and put new stones. In my brethren, there are situations that are easy to be resolved. Why removing the stones? Stone is what was the structure of the house. Stone is what caused the, the walls and caused the security of the house and the enforcement of the house. And there are people like this that do not let go of what is what they have learned. There are people in this way that do not, can never deliver themselves, then do not allow the Holy Spirit to cause them to be free from the past. So then what happens? The child grows up, learning this, the relationship between the husband and wife, there was something that is constant, it is already on the structure. They can never live without that. They cannot live without uh, a fight or a dis disagreement. And the child sees this. And this begins to spread inside of the house. This thing begins to go from a stone to another, from a room to another. And then after a short time, the whole house is contaminated. But the removal of the stones was essential. Why is that? Because when you remove the stones, you do a complete cleanup. And there are moments in our lives that something needs to be taken out. And only the Lord can do this. Only the Holy Spirit can pull something out, something that you like the most, but that hinders your fellowship. What you, for many years, you grew up seeing this in your house, maybe, but you are sure because the Lord already spoke to you that he, this has stolen your blessing has stolen the peace in your house has stolen the fellowship in your house and the harmony in your house but there are moments in which those stones they needed to be removed so that all their stones may be placed in that place and what other stones are these they are the blessings of those spirit the means of grace those are the stones that David, when he, he, he went to the river, he took to fight Goliath. There are giants in our lives that will only be defeated. They will only be defeated with spiritual weapons. And the stones like this are the ones that the Lord wants to offer you. Those are the stones that throughout this month, the Lord will be distributing to the ones who enter in fellowship in the presence of the Lord with a contrite heart, saying, Lord, I want a blessing for my life. Lord, I want to be victorious. Lord, I need to be faithful to you. Lord, I need to give good testimony in my house and my household to my children, to my husband and wife. Lord, I want to be a faithful servant to you. And we're going to pray. We're not going to hear your problem. We're not going to hear anything because it's, it's not our place to hear things like that. When you have been called in your day that you're very chosen, pray to the Lord. Fast. Don't go there in a, in a reckless way. No, set this day aside like if it was seven days. Set this day apart. Say, this day I'm going to set apart to the Lord. I'm going to work. but I'm going in fellowship. 
I will fast. I'm going to pray because I want to go there at night and receive a prayer with the lay of hands. And I want to hear the sweet voice of the Lord. I want to hear the good advices of the Lord. I want to hear the direction of the Lord. I want to hear that the Lord is being pleased with me. That's what we want to hear. That's the objective of this month. The praise group is going to be fasting also in prayer so that we may be simply instruments in the hands of the Lord, instruments of blessing for the brethren who are trusting on the Lord and believing on the instruction of the Lord and obeying the instruction of the Lord because all of this, my brethren, is for our own good, for our own good. We don't have any in, uh, we're not interested in hearing the problem of the brother A, B, or C. I, I can't. No, it's, it's between you and God. Seven days. You'll be, pray, you'll be in prayer with the Lord. This is a moment of fellowship where you're going to say, Lord, speak with me. Renew my home, Lord. Renew my first love. Renew the joy that one day you gave me when I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Remember, remember this? When you began to speak in tongues or when you had vision, when you began to be used with spiritual gifts. What a blessing. Remember when you would let go of everything to go to the service. It was not a bad day. There was no rain or hurricane or a boss that would prevent it or a husband that would prevent it. You just wanted to be in the presence of the Lord. And that's what the Lord wants to do. He wants to renew us, my brethren. Because when, when all of this was happening and the priest would go there and look and check, and that's what the Lord is going to do. Throughout this month, the Lord is going to be inspecting our lives. The Lord is the one who knows what is hidden in the intimacy in the greatest depth of our heart only the Lord the priest that could go there and look into the house and see and see the root of the problem where the problem was and what to do with the problem and that's what the Lord is going to do we need throughout this month to pray to the Lord and say Lord so that every home may receive a blessing and so that may it not be just a meeting I went there because I already gave my name so I cannot get out of it no that's not it you need to be in the presence of the almighty God it is a moment between you and God it's like a, a great meeting and the, the judge will be there and you tell the Lord Lord I trust in your power and it a blessing this area of my life, I really lost control over it. There's no way for me to be overcome this alone, Lord, whatever it might be. I already said maybe a hatred, a bitterness, a uh, 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 sin that you didn't forget, or, or maybe uh, too much jealousy. Oh, husband cannot do, or a wife cannot do anything because you get too jealous. This is not possible. Whatever it might be, anger and wrath, wrath is something that is crazy. It is a moment where the Lord is going to treat with each one of us. Those are moments like this, my brethren, that the Lord set apart for this church, for His kingdom throughout the nation and the world. All of us, we're going to do this. You know why? Because the Lord loves the home. The Lord loves what He has created. And the Lord takes pleasure in blessing His servants. Oh, but my home is broken up. No, that's all right. But you are there, the representative of salvation Jesus. If your wife is not serve, serving the Lord or your husband does not serve the Lord but you serve so that you're going to be light in the darkness and you're going to ask from the Lord boldness so that you may be able to withstand 
much more than the homes that are complete in the house of the Lord. And the Lord is going to give a blessing. The Lord is going to strengthen you. You know why? Because the Lord is in it. The Lord is in this. Amen. May the Lord bless us. Let us hear a song of praise.
Glory to God. Let's stand up, my brethren. The leprosy, it would destroy a family. Leprosy would lead the individual to, to isolation. And then solitude and sadness would come because he could not live with other people. And, and that's what the world does, that, does to us. Sin does to us. Disobedience set us apart from the Lord, destroy the home, destroy the harmony. And many times the thoughts, the desires, the acts, what no one knows, no one sees, but only the priest sees. And all of this, many times, is taking you away from the presence of the Lord. He's taking you from living in, in a body, in living as a family, because we are here a family. A family that has been prepared to live in heaven. And this month, the Lord wants to give a blessing. The Lord wants to operate miracles. But no one knows. Only the Lord knows. And you need to go to the priest and confess, Lord, I need this blessing. And the Lord will operate. The Lord will take and put something deeper. God is going to put faith and love. The Lord will place obedience to him, not, not to the institution, not to man. But the Lord is going to give you an opportunity to exercise and to live by faith. Amen. Let's hear a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, I want to praise him. Exalt the Lord, because you are a greatest judge. We praise the Lord. Because your angels are always around us. We praise the Lord because truly your grace has been enough for us. Lord, we praise you for the service tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord, particularly, He is speaking to a woman. She has come from a long battle with her home and that is broken up. And she is asking a blessing for the Lord because she is very tired. And it's not easy, I know, to have a, a home that is broken up, have a home where your husband or wife do not support you, is not in the same spiritual level as you, or is in a, a level that is completely opposed to you. It's not easy. It's not easy for you to be able to want to pray, is unable to pray at home, want to go to the service. Nobody helps you. It's not easy. You want to obey the Lord and not have any support. It's difficult. But the Lord tonight is giving a special portion to this sister. And this portion is an anointing from God, an anointing of joy. The Lord is bringing joy to her heart. The Lord is increasing your hope and your perseverance as well, so that you may be able to withstand, because your victory is very close. My sister, stay steadfast in the Lord. Remain in the Lord. No one can give you support in this life, but the Lord is giving you His hand to you, and He is carrying you. He is guiding you alone in the midst of your trial and your difficulties. But tonight, Lord wants you to glorify Him for everything that He has done in your life. The Lord also has shown that all of us, we, were, we went through a, an inspection from the Lord. We needed to present our armor to the Lord like if we were soldiers. And we went through an inspection from the general. And it was necessary doing this inspection. It was noticed that a few adjustments needed to be made. 
a few pieces needed to be replaced, other pieces needed to be polished or an adjustment. And it's interesting that it was seen that a, 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 a servant to a couple, they didn't bring their shields. And, but tonight, a sister and her brother, but they received new shields from the part of the Lord. This is true. You are in a battle. You are in a constant battle. Sometimes you break something. But the good thing is that the Lord is here renewing us, strengthening us, giving us new armor so that we may continue our battles. Because they will not stop until the Lord returns. There, is, there are two more gifts, right? Yes. It was seen in the beginning of the service. The Lord was sending angels, and the order of the Lord was so that our feet were, were washed. And I saw that they, they bought vessels with water, and during the service, this work was done. And at the end of the service, we had our feet washed and massaged. What a blessing, huh? A massage on the foot, there's nothing nothing better. And there was there was part of a family that and a family received a great relief because they thought they would not be able to withstand to continue on this walk. Amen. How good when the Lord work in our feet giving us the means to walk. The path is only one, it's Jesus. Our path is is leading towards eternity. Amen. So the Lord is giving to all of us this ability to, you know, because of the scenes to, to be washed. This work that was done, removing the dust, removing the dirt, removing the gap, removing our flaws, because only in Jesus our sins are forgiven. Amen. And also the Lord left a blessing for the brethren from the prophetic service. The ones who participated, they received a blessing. A special ministration for the brethren that were there. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, receive our, our adoration, our praise to you, and that we may take possession of our blessing. Lord, may we give worth proper worth to the meeting that we're going to have with you and that you may give us the means each one of us so that we may be only instruments of blessings on your hands and that all of us may leave your presence loving more your kingdom loving more salvation Jesus and that we may give proper worth and keep in our hearts your word Lord Give us a night of rest and a day, Sunday, according to your will. And preserve, Lord, our faith. Help the ones who are going to be voting tomorrow, exercising their right as a citizen, so that they may choose the better person, Lord. And that the world may not prevail, but that we may have freedom to continue offering service to you. Give your servants the wisdom in their choices and that your name may be glorified. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The ship may be seated. The apostolic blessing. Hey. Let's go. Lord God, in your name we say that the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit May be proud to all of us now and forevermore. Amen. And now you can sit down. Now we need quickly, in, in mostly in five minutes, we need to start praying for the homes that have already been scared for today. If you desire prayer, you give assistance to the brethren, and then afterwards we're going to give continuity. Tomorrow in the morning we have Sunday school. And the brethren who go to vote, remember of what is being the instruction 
from the Lord. Vote in the correct way. Candidate is, is against what the word, the values of the worth does not deserve our vote. So be paying attention to this. I'm not saying vote or A or B, but you need to know the word so that you may vote in individuals who give worth to this. Amen. And peace of the Lord Jesus. Jota.